Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> Beyond the last horizon's rim, Beyond adventure's farthest quest, somewhere they rise, serene and dim, the happy, happy hills of rest. Well, rise they may, these restful hills, but there's one thing on which you can depend. They have nothing to do with Springfield or the white frame house on Maple Street. When it comes to rest, the Andersons live in a world apart, a world in which sanity itself sometimes hangs by a slender thread. Like this. Jim. Jim. Hmm? What? What's the matter? What? This is the fourth and last time. Uh, are you or are you not going to get out of bed? I don't know. What time is it? Nine o'clock. It is, huh? It certainly is. To tell you the truth, I don't feel so hot. Why, Jim, what is it? I feel kind of achy all over. Oh, darling, if you'd only said something. How could I say anything? I was asleep. <laughs> I'd oh, better call oh. Dr. Simmons. Leave Dr. Simmons alone. But if you don't feel I well... I don't need him, Margaret. I'm coming down with a little cold, and I don't need a doctor to tell me to stay in bed and keep warm. Jim. I'll do it myself and send him a bill. <laughs> Jim, you're sure there's nothing really wrong with you? Of course I'm sure. Outside of feeling miserable, I feel fine. <laughs> oh, dear. Now what? The girls are coming over this afternoon to play bridge. Honey, just pretend I'm not even here and we'll all be happy. Well, how about some breakfast? No, oh, I couldn't eat a thing. I just want to lie here and rest. But if you don't eat... Rest. All right, Jim, if you're going to be stubborn. I'm not being stubborn. But I'm the one who doesn't feel well. I and... won't be out of this room for two minutes before you'll think of something you want. I want to rest. Very well. I'll be downstairs if you need me. Yes, dear. Thank you very much. I want to rest, that's all. I'm not asking any special favors. I just want everybody to leave me alone. That's what I want. Margaret? <laughs> Margaret? Yes, Jim? Uh, is there any coffee? If there isn't, I can fix some. Well, that'll be fine, honey. Just a little peace and quiet. That's all I want. <laughs> Take it easy over the weekend, and Monday I'll be a new man. The way I feel now, I don't even care who the new man is. I didn't even Get a little rest. That's the only way to make it cold. It was right here on my desk. Well, then that's where it ought to be. Well, it would be if you hadn't taken it. I didn't either take it. You certainly did. Bud. I certainly did it. Bud. You want me, Dad? Yes. Come in here, please. And don't you tell him I took it, because I didn't. Dad, I had a glass retort for my chemistry set right on my desk. And if you're going to let her take anything she feels like taking... I did not take it, Daddy. I didn't even see it. Kathy. And he has no right to say I did. Kathy. Either. <laughs> Kathy. Yes, Daddy? Why aren't you in school? It's Saturday. Oh... I would have to pick Saturday. <laughs> Why don't you uh, go outside and play? It's raining. It isn't raining, it's snowing. It's raining. Kathy. It's snowing. Bud. Well, it's rainy snow. Look, both of you. Father. Oh, no, it isn't possible. <laughs> Father, look at this ad in the Herald Formals for $11.95. Betty. And last week they were over $20. It's the biggest bargain since we bought Alaska. <laughs> we bought Alaska? Uh, not personally, Kathy It's, uh, Betty I'm in no condition to talk about dresses But, Father, I'm going to a New Year's party And I don't have a thing to wear But not a thing Well, you can go as the New Year <laughs> <laughs> 
mother. <laughs> Boy, would she make a hit. <laughs> I don't get it. It's just as well. Now, look, uh, all of you, I'm trying to get a little rest. So will you please try to be quiet? Don't you feel well, Father? I feel awful. Hey, wait a minute. Bud, Father just told you. You've got my measuring glass. Betty, if that belongs to Bud... It was on my desk, and what right has she got to go into my room and take stuff? You see, you said I took it, and I didn't. Kathy... I paid for the chemistry set with my own money, and she's got no right to touch it. Bud... How did I know it was yours? It's just a silly old glass. Betty... Well, if it's so silly, why don't you leave it alone? Stop it. I didn't even touch it. I said stop it. (laughs) Betty, give Bud his glass. But I'm going to wash my hair, Father, and Give it to him. Jumping creepers. Now, look, kids, when you don't feel well, your mother and I show you every consideration. We make you comfortable, read to you, bring you your meals, and we're happy to do it. I'm not asking for anything like that. All I want you to do is leave me alone. That isn't too much, is it? Of course not, Father. Gosh, if anybody told us, we wouldn't have made a sound. I'm sure you wouldn't. Well, what's going on in here? A convention? The uh, children were just leaving, weren't you? You bet, Dad. Come on, Kathy. Come on where? We're leaving. But I don't want to leave. I want to stay here and ask Daddy. Well, stop pulling me. Why do you always have to pull me? Here's your coffee, dear. Oh, thank you. Margaret, are all children that noisy? (laughs) Darling, there are only two kinds of children, noisy ones and sick ones. Just be thankful that ours are healthy. They don't have to be that healthy. (laughs) I'll be downstairs if you want anything else. I was healthy when I was a kid and I didn't drive my father into a nervous breakdown. He said you were worse than any of ours. Is that so? I was one of the quietest kids in Springfield. Everybody said I... Margaret! (laughs) A fine thing. Starts an argument and then walks away. (laughs) Just like a woman. Dad. Bud, I just finished telling you... Dad, if you'd like to borrow my radio, I can hook it up in here for you. Thank you, Bud, but uh, I'll do fine without a radio. I won't be using it on account I'm going down to the playroom to invent something. Uh, I know, Bud, but... uh, It won't take me a second, Dad. All I have to do is plug it in. Just leave it, Bud. If I want it, I'll plug it in myself. Okay, Dad. If you want anything else, just let me know. Uh, Thank you, Bud. Thank you very much. That's just what I need, a radio. I don't feel bad enough. Whistle and chirp with Lizzie Glurp. (laughs) Are you resting, Father? Yes, I'm resting. Like a yo-yo with St. Vitus dance. (laughs) Poor father. We give you a pretty bad time, don't we? No, Betty. It's just that... What are you going to do? I brought the pillows in from my room. I don't want any more pillows. I don't like a lot of pillows, Betty. Please. I was perfectly all right. There. Isn't that better? Yes, it's fine. Now, just close your eyes and we'll go on a long journey. What? I'm going to read to you Betty I want to, Father It's the least I can do Betty, if you'll just Yes, Father Go ahead Yes, Father We watched her breathing through the night Her breathing soft and low As in her breast the wave of life Kept heaving to and fro Our very hopes belied our fears Our fears our hopes belied We thought her dying when she slept. (laughs) And sleeping when she died. (laughs) At last... Betty. Yes, Father? What's the name of that lovely thing? (laughs) The Deathbed by Thomas Hood. (laughs) Isn't it beautiful? Can't you just see her wasting away? Oh... How much did you say those dresses were? Eleven ninety-five. There's a twenty-dollar bill in my wallet. Go buy a dress. Oh, thank you, Father. And don't rush it. See if you can't take all day. <laughs> oh, I will, Father. You're an angel. 
go. And bring back the change. Yes, Father. Look out, Kathy. Well, get out of my way. Deathbed. <laughs> a fine way to cheer a man up. Hello, Daddy. Kathy, what on earth? I brought you breakfast, Daddy. Well, that's very nice, Kathy, but I told your mother... I carried it up all by myself. But I don't want any... Kathy, look out. Mommy Ma- said Kathy, that... you... Oh, no. Daddy! <laughs> Kathy, when they say breakfast in bed, they don't mean you dump it in. <laughs> Stop that wailing and get some of these dishes out of my lap. Orange juice and cereal and coffee. Margaret! Oh, stop it, Kathy. Margaret! I've never seen it to fail. Anytime I make plans for anything. What is it, Jim? Kathy dumped the whole breakfast in my lap. Oh, dear. (laughs) What was that? I don't know. It was in the basement. It was just an explosion The phone's ringing I know it's ringing The next time anyone wants to spend the day in bed I'm going to leave town for a month Hello Oh, hello, Mr. Gribble I'm sorry, but Jim doesn't feel very well today Well, yes, I know, Mr. Gribble But he can't possibly come to the phone He's resting (laughs) Poor father, what he wouldn't give for a little rest. Peace and quiet can mean so much to a man now and then. Just like some things can mean a lot to you ladies. For instance, it'd mean a lot, wouldn't it, to pour a cup of your coffee for the world's greatest coffee expert and hear him say, best coffee I ever tasted. Yes, that'd really warm your heart. Because that number one expert is your husband. Of course, your grocer calls us experts, too. Our Maxwell House coffee is America's favorite brand. But once you've brewed the coffee, the expert with the final word is that man of yours. And if you'll make his coffee Maxwell House, we're mighty sure he'll say, Best coffee I ever tasted. In fact, if he doesn't, we'll give you your money back. And here's why. We know there's no coffee tastes like Maxwell House because no coffee's made like Maxwell House. In all this world, there's only one recipe for that famous good-to-the-last-drop flavor. A recipe demanding certain fine coffees blended just so. And that recipe is ours alone. So tomorrow, get yourself a pound of Maxwell House. Serve your husband a cup. If he doesn't say, best coffee ever, why, just send us the can, an unused portion, and we'll gladly refund the price you paid. Our address is right on every familiar blue tin. Tomorrow, serve coffee that'll please the world's greatest coffee expert. Serve your husband Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. Great changes have taken place since last we saw the Andersons. Jim isn't feeling any better, of course, and he's done mighty little resting. But there have been changes. Well, one change anyway. You see, now it's Saturday afternoon, like this. Kathy! Kathy! Did you call me, Daddy? Can I speak to you for a minute, please? I have to practice. You can practice some other time. Okay. Hasn't been near the piano for three weeks. Now she's got to do it all in one day. I'm coming, Daddy. 
Doesn't know which end of a piano is up anyway. Don't know why she keeps on taking lessons, except maybe to get even with the teacher. That's my new piece, Daddy. Isn't it pretty? Yes, it's uh, beautiful. Uh, Kathy. Yes, Daddy? Why don't you uh, go somewhere? I don't know any place to go. Uh, find your brother and uh, help him. You send him downtown with Betty. Oh. Well, why don't you go shopping with Mommy? She isn't going shopping. She's going to play bridge in the living room. Why don't you go next door to the Davises? You can play with Patty. We don't know what to play. Well, play uh, games. Must be dozens of games you can play. Like what? Uh, actress. You and Patty can act out stories. I used to do it all the time when I was a little boy. You played actress? I acted out stories. Like uh, Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman, Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates. Daddy. Yes, Kathy? If you want to get rid of me, why don't you say so? I want to get rid of you. <laughs> okay, I'll go over to Patty's. Thank you very much. Parents, if they want to get rid of you, why don't they say so? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if we shouldn't have gotten a puppy instead. <laughs> now what happened to the darn thing? Margaret! What is it, Jim? Where's that detective magazine I was reading? Which detective magazine? The one Hector Smith wanted to borrow. You loaned it to Hector Smith. But I wasn't through with it. Margaret! I have to answer the door. Fine bunch of friends I have. Don't even wait until you're finished with a magazine before... Margaret! Just a minute, Jim. Yoo-hoo, Jim. Hello. Oh, no. <laughs> comes up here, so help me, I'll kill myself. What do you want, dear? Nothing, not a thing. Uh, make believe you never even heard of me. Jim, you poor thing. Hold your hats, kids. Here we go again. Why, I hadn't the faintest idea you didn't feel well, but my, you certainly do. I certainly do what? What? <laughs> What do I certainly do? You look awful, and I think it's just a shame. Well, I haven't shaved today, Ellen, and I... All right, come on, let's get out of bed. Come on. What? Get out of bed, get out of bed. How am I going I... to help you if you just lie there? Helen. And don't think I can't, too. Did you ever meet George's Aunt Mildred? No, but if you... She was at death's door. That's what she was. At death's door. And I pulled her through. <laughs> the door I certainly did Helen, if you'll just go downstairs with the rest of the girls Jim, will you please stop arguing with me? Now go into the bathroom and stand in the tub Stand in the tub? What for? Oh, man, they're all alike George keeps saying the same thing What for? What for? And what do you tell him? Well, it's perfectly simple. I have the most wonderful cold pills, but you have to take them in warm water. So, I've got to stand in the tub. Well, you certainly don't want to get water all over the floor, do you? Margaret! For you and Dorothy Come and along, Lucille. Jim. Upsy daisy. Helen, please. You're fighting me. Helen, Margaret was speaking to you. She was? <laughs> Helen. Hello, Margaret. It's nice seeing you, dear. Honey. Why, Jim? Uh, not you, Helen. I was talking to Margaret. <laughs> well, I should hope so. Uh, Helen, Dorothy and Lucille are waiting, and if we're going to play. Hey, what's going on up there? Oh, we'll be right down, Dorothy. I'm not going to move, Margaret. But not a foot. Helen. This poor boy, lying helpless and alone. Helen. Looking to us for comfort and sympathy. Helen. I... How can we leave him friendless? And did you say something, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to rest, Helen. So why don't you and... Margaret, you better come downstairs. I think Lucille's getting ready to blow a gasket. Hi, Jim. Hello, Dorothy. Helen, won't you please... What's the matter, Jim? You got a cold? 
No, I feel fine. As a matter of fact... Isn't he brave, Dorothy? He wants to fight it all alone, like a mother lion having her babies in the jungle. (laughs) Margaret, where do you keep the hot water bottle? Dorothy, if you'll just forget about me... I'm sure Jim will be much happier... A turnover, Jim. What? We'll put it right in the middle of his back, get it good and hot, and then when he can't stand the pain for another second... Dorothy, if you'll just help me get him into the bathtub... Helen! She wants me to stand up, Margaret, that's all. Uh, You wouldn't have any camphor oil, would you? We could rub that on his neck and then wrap it with flannel. Well, I've been giving and... these same pills to George for years, week after week, day after day, <laughs> and they... Dorothy, will you please go down and tell Lucille? We'll be right down, Lou. George had four colds in one weekend, but hadn't been for these pills. I he don't want any get... pills. Of course he doesn't. Turn over, Jim. And I don't want any camphor oil. Isn't he stubborn? Turn over, Jim. <laughs> Margaret, will you please ask them to leave me alone? Helen. We're only trying to help you, Jim. Get over on the other side of the bed, Helen. We'll flip him. <laughs> Dorothy, please. Well, who's winning? Oh, Lucille, I'm awfully sorry. Lou, you remember how sick my Jimmy was Why last don't week? you leave the poor man alone? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Helen. Oh, I'm not being ridiculous. All he needs is plenty of hot water and lemon juice. Lemon and... juice? For a cold? Margaret. Girls, if you'll just... Look at this, Margaret. It says right here on the bottle, Dr. Scholl... Oh, that's the wrong bottle. <laughs> Well, my mother raised six children, and she never gave us anything but hot water and lemon juice. Well, it just happens that I was the head of the Red Cross bandage wrappers. (laughs) And if you're going back to an old-fashioned thing like hot water and lemon juice... Old-fashioned? Margaret. I've seen some of the shirts you bought for Sam, and if that's your idea of new fashion... I have that bottle right in my purse. Well, I wouldn't exactly call your husband a fashion plate. If you'll just go downstairs... Why, he's thrown away better clothes than your husband's wearing right now. Uh, Maybe he throws them, but he doesn't throw them far. (laughs) Girls, if we're going to play bridge... Bridge? I wouldn't play bridge with her if my life depended on it. Uh, You'd better not, the way you play. (laughs) Well, I'm sorry, Margaret, but I've just developed the worst headache. Well, if you're leaving on my account, you needn't bother. Girls, I'm sure we can straighten this whole thing out if you'll only listen to me for a minute. Helen. (laughs) Hello, Jim. (laughs) Hello, Helen. Uh, Isn't there someplace else you'd rather go? I don't think so. Did you have anything in mind? (laughs) Well... Wouldn't you like to go home or someplace? Oh, good gracious, no. It's always so noisy over there. And here it's so peaceful and quiet. Margaret! What is it, Jim? Call Helen. Helen! Just a minute, dear. I'm sorry, Jim, but I'll have to leave you. Margaret's calling me. (laughs) That's all right, Helen. I understand. Take good care of your cold, dear. I will. Goodbye, Helen. Did you call me, Jim? No, I... (laughs) Just said goodbye. Ah, sweet. I don't know. I'm good to my children. I'm kind to animals. I help more old ladies across the street than any ten men in Springfield. Not again. Kathy! Do you want me, Daddy? Why aren't you at Patty Davis's? Kathy, stop it Jim, I told her to practice She hasn't practiced all week She's going to take a lesson on Monday And listening to a piano isn't going to give you a cold Well, tell her to keep her foot off the pedal Okay, Daddy She doesn't care how it sounds Just as long as it's loud Oh, Father, it's heavenly It's the most heavenly dress you've ever seen Fine Put the change on the dresser. It's blue, the dreamiest, creamiest blue. Put the change on the dresser. Bud borrowed two dollars, but he said you could take it out of his allowance. Put the change... What? Well, they were having a sale on chemistry sets. Where is he? In the 
the playroom. Bud! But, but Father, he said... Bud! <laughs> no, not twice. Not twice in one day. Margaret! Margaret! Beyond the last horizon's rim, beyond adventure's farthest quest, somewhere they rise, serene and dim, the happy, happy hills of rest. <laughs> Each weekend, is this your problem? On your grocer's shelves, so many different kinds of coffee. And how are you to choose the one brand that gives you the most in flavor for your money? Now, that's something the world's greatest coffee expert can help you find. So check with your husband. He's the expert we mean. From your grocer's, bring home that famous blue tin with the big white cup and drop. Serve Maxwell House coffee to your husband. When he smiles and says, best coffee I ever tasted, you'll know Maxwell House has the most in flavor. You'll know it's your best coffee buy. Start enjoying Maxwell House coffee tomorrow and count all the truly good cups of coffee you get from each pound. We think you'll be convinced. You get more for your money with Maxwell House coffee. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> It's Monday now, and in the Springfield office of the Cavalier Life and Casualty Company, the manager, one James Anderson Sr., is diligently engaged with the daily grind. Thusly. What did I say, Miss Thomas? The enclosed form covers application for damages to glass and general furnishings on premises of the insured. While the amount may seem rather high... No, no, uh, cross that last part out. All right. Uh, the estimate must be considered to be extremely conservative in view of the fact that damage was caused by two separate and distinct explosions. Please let me, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know how to finish it. I think so. <sighs> well, what's next? There's a memo from Mr. Buckley. I don't know. I can't even think straight. Mr. Anderson. Mm hmm? Of course, it's not of my business, but I don't think you should have come in today. No. What you ought to do is go home and spend a nice, quiet day in bed. If you have trouble getting the youngsters to eat a hot cereal these cold mornings, just tell them how Hopalong Cassidy goes for hot post wheat meal. Hot post wheat meal has such a wonderful nut-like flavor, and it's chock full of solid whole wheat nourishment, the kind that Hoppy goes for and your youngsters need. Hot post wheat meal cooks in just three and a half minutes. And be sure to tell the kids it's Hoppy's favorite hot cereal, hot post wheat meal. You'll see, you'll agree, it's the best hot cereal you ever ate. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Dragnet, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Exciting Dragnet is next. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.